you could have like a real you 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 go to the coffee shop okay you and her you're sitting down it's uh it's relaxed everyone's calm <laughs> you're calm she she doesn't have a you know a pro palestine sign or whatever she's just sitting you're sitting she's sitting and uh she's like all right let's chat dr gorka what, what do you what do you say to her oh i i do exactly what what my friend who is the morning show here in dc chris plan says uh, they're, they're, they're so cretinous. They're, they're such drones. I'd, 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 I'd try the Socratic method. I wouldn't berate them. I wouldn't lecture them. I'd say, oh, okay, um, so what's a fascist? And, and just listen to them go, uh, 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 just, just ask them, because they have no idea. It's like, it's like asking them, so river to the sea, wh- which river, which sea? Just, just ask them a question. Mm-hmm. And, and this, this is the good news, right? These, these kids are utterly indoctrinated, brainwashed drones who want to have their kale salad and their soy latte delivered to them by the college <laughs> because it counts as humanitarian aid as they're screaming, you know, destroy America. But the level, the, the depth of the indoctrination is a veneer. It is incredible. It's about, it's about a nanometer thick. They, they're really morons. They don't know which river. They don't know which sea. And they have no idea that fascism is actually a left-wing ideology invented by Mussolini, and they can't define what it is. But they know Donald Trump's a fascist, but they have no idea how to define it. I, I just demonstrate their own imbecility by asking them a question. Well, Joanna Kingslutsky is a PhD student, and uh, she wrote her dissertation on the fantasies of limitless energy in the transatlantic romantic imagination of 1760 to 1860. You didn't write your dissertation on the fantasies of limitless energy in the transatlantic romantic imagination, Dr. Gorka. No, I'm sorry. You know? I just wrote it on the difference between politically motivated terrorists like the IRA and religiously motivated terrorists like Al Qaeda. I mean, I did something useless like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, I got a couple. Um, all right, a couple like more personal questions if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, they're not really personal, but they're uh, more uh, selfish, I should say. Um, the other day, we talked to Tom Cotton. So Tom Cotton wanted to call in the National Guard. We don't really need to talk about that. But I got a couple of emails from people who are like, why are you talking to Tom Cotton? He's a rhino. And I'm like, what? what, what is, what's your view on Tom Cotton? I don't think he's a rhino. Um, he's never going to be president, but uh, yeah, there, there are people who are much worse than Tom Cotton, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in the Senate. So... Yeah, I find that reaction a little bit strange. I mean, look, I, I only allow okay. like two or three senators on my show because the rest of them are useless and every one of them thinks they're going to be president. But, but Tom Cotton isn't one of the worst. How about uh, tomorrow we're talking to Tulsi Gabbard? Oh, she's a lunatic. She's a dangerous lunatic. I, I know she's got a new book out, but, but anyone who is proud of her support to the murderous, murderous killer, Assad, who goes to has t- goes and has tea with Assad in Syria, and then while whilst we're in the White House fighting ISIS, and she's making garbage, QAnon level statements about how the the white helmets are really Al Qaeda. She's a dangerous, dangerous woman. Mm. You know, attractive, I, I never... nice hairdo, but you know, dangerous. <laughs> So our producer, producer Zach, brought up the point that she endorsed Bernie Sanders. Not ancient history. It would have, would have right. been 2016. Right. Yeah. Um, so I looked, and sure enough, and I, I looked up an old clip of her. I just mentioned this because of hair. And she is, uh, she definitely has had a, what do they call it, a glow up? Zach, what do they call it? A glow up? Yes. yes. Is that the term? Yeah, it's not yeah. the bride of Frankenstein. So she looks better Frank, now. Yeah, she has the streak, the bride of Frankenstein streak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's good. But I, there is a thing in the conservative movement that I'd like to rid of. That um, it's, it's like if, if if a if a pretty woman, there's two things. If a pretty woman yeah. is like says something kind of like we're like enamored by it to the point of like no other thinking, that's a problem. But then the other one is if someone turns from the dark side, if we they're a Bernie Sanders supporter, them. but then if, if they say one thing yes. that's, you know, uh, a putatively conservative, just a tiny bit, they go, oh my gosh, we love you. It's like, excuse me? It's like RFK. I just posted this video somebody dug up of RFK, yeah, yeah. you know, saying that, that, that Republicans or Cretans are going to have sex with your daughter. I mean, you know, that, that, you know, RFK says something about vaccines that, that we like. And we say, oh my gosh, yeah. you're such a cool guy. Oh, you mean the lunatic who wants to put you in prison if you dare question 
the, uh, the, 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 the global warming garbage. That guy, that guy who says the Second Amendment, no, 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 you don't need guns. And then now he says because he's running for president that the Second Amendment is fine. This is a really dangerous thing, Mike. When, when we give, you know, credibility to someone who really hates our guts and says one nice thing about us, that's, that's just, <laughs> it's naive. It's truly naive. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're so desperate to be liked. That or, yeah. like, to be on the cool kids team. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, you like us? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, we love you now. It's like, mm, oh, no. Anyway, like, we're talking like to her my tomorrow. colleagues in the, in the White House who wanted to have, you know, nice things said about them by the Washington Post. And I say, excuse me, Washington Post hates you and your boss and 64 million Americans <laughs> who voted for him. Why are you talking to them? So, you, I re- are you of, that desperate for affection? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, you got a message from the Washington Post the other day. What? What? what actually, I got it here. Yeah. I want to read what they wrote first. All right, here we go. This is what uh, this is what the Washington Post wrote to uh, Doctor Sebastian Gorga. Is this a text? They got yeah, your they number. They got somehow. my cell phone, and they, this woman texted me yesterday morning. Okay, this is from uh, Sarah. Hello, Doctor Gorga. I'm a reporter at the Washington Post. You could really stop reading there, but we'll keep going. And we're working on an article about how Donald Trump's messages on Truth Social are communicated outside that particular platform by a key group of his like-minded supporters. Okay. So he'll, he'll post something on Truth Social and then other people will take it and share it somewhere else. That's the story. Yeah. All right. You are one of the people whom our data team identified as a key individual, in addition to Mark Levin, Laura Loomer, and Michael Flynn, among others who helps Donald J. Trump spread his message to the wider world, like as if he needs help <laughs> to it. We wanted to ask, for, right? We want, like, who, Donald, who? Who's this guy? Oh, we a- wanted to ask for your comment about that role, if you see it as necessary, and how and why you do what you do with respect to his messages. We've identified some of Trump's most popular statements, sentiments as those around 2020 election fraud and 2024 election interference. Would you care to comment for this piece? Many thanks for considering it, Sarah. What do you say to that, Dr. Gorka? Yeah, um, well, this is what I responded. I, I get these requests from the mainstream media now and again. I don't know if this woman actually knows what I've told her colleagues, but this is what I immediately texted back to Sarah Ellison. Uh, you work for a propaganda arm of the Democrat Party and as such are a w- willing foot soldier for a, quote, elite, which hates Western civilization and its apotheosis, the United States. Your pro-Hamas tweets evince as much. You are scum and a hack. Go to hell. Oh, and you can quote me. Did uh, did did she, did she quote you? I don't know, but she texted back saying thank you for your for your response. <laughs> but but, but this is really important. Done, this is, goes back to what we just said. I saw this in the White House, and it pisses me off that I saw it last weekend with so-called conservatives posting selfies of themselves in their tuxedos at the White House Correspondents Association gala with Joe Biden. And and you're going, Mm. what the hell? I mean, really, the whole of the mainstream media disdains America, hates conservatives, and is a water carrier for the 51 intelligence officers, for the Russia collusion hoaxes, for the suppress the Hunter Biden story, and you want to, you know, mug for the camera with them or give them interviews? If you, I went on CNN, I went on MSNBC when I worked in the White House to destroy the people there, and they remain. And when people see me, you know, seven years later, they say, "Oh, we love that clip with you with uh, Anderson Cooper when you told him uh, that more people watch the Cartoon Network than watch CNN." People, you know, that's what you do. You you go up and you make. Cuomo look like a cretin. You go on the shows to embarrass them in front of their audience. You don't go on their shows because you want to be loved by people who hate you. We need to wake up. This, this is not, you know, politics as usual. The dividing line in America is those who love America and those who hate it and are actively destroying it. And conservatives need to wake up to that. They need to wake up to who RFK is, who Tulsi Gabbard is, and just get get with the program in terms of saving the nation uh i have one last question for you but i heard some birds in the background it's one of my favorite things is when i hear birds in the background is that what i heard right then or no yes yes i'm sitting in my yard with my dogs 
Yeah, that's that's lovely. That's pleasant. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, that's like nice. one last. Yeah, you got okay, the hard I, I got the afternoon radio gig, so that that's that's why I'm doing. <laughs> No, I like to like to do it, get it done in the morning. Um, I love birds in the background. I feel like like I did, didn't a couple of years ago didn't it come out that the masters they just yeah. where they would pump in fake pump birds sound effects. Fake, fake birds, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think like some some bird guy was like, oh, that's the sound of a yeah, bubba bubba yeah, bird, and those are native right to now. a bird to... in Florida. Yeah, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> right, right. Ah, that's great. Yeah, we should pump in some birds, though. I think that would be uh, that'd be very nice. Um, so a gentleman called in yesterday. Uh, the genesis of it doesn't matter, but I thought you may have some insight because you do your masculinity hour yeah. once a week. And uh, this guy said that the root of all of this, the root of all the problems in America, is that people don't want to work. And uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, what, what do you think of work? What do you make of work? Yeah, um, it's weird. I, I have, what, what do they call that imposter syndrome thing? I have a little bit of that because yeah, yeah. I always complain to my wife that I, I'm, I'm so lazy and I don't work hard enough. <laughs> and then everybody else on my team says, will you stop sending us stuff at 2 a.m. to post? Why, why did you do 12 <laughs> interviews on international? You know, I, I have one of those things where I'm constantly doing stuff, but I never think it's, it's enough. But that's my problem. I don't think. I don't think. People, it's a problem after COVID that people don't want to work, absolutely, but it's, it's a certain generation. I mean, look at that video. The most viral video I ever posted was of that trans Starbucks, Starbucks worker crying because she had to work an eight-hour day. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a problem, right? That, that you think an eight-hour day is, 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 is too much. No, if, if I had to, if I had to think of one univalent, just one explanation for why we are where we are today. It's not that people are working hard enough. It's garbage. It's the lack of courage. In America, and as an immigrant, this really saddens me, given our history, the pioneer spirit, the can-do, just the seeming absence amongst so many Americans of the one virtue that makes all the other virtues possible if we solve that, if we had courage uh, to face down enemies external, internal, the cancel culture, our lunatic, you know, cousin, you know, who's piping the mainstream talking points from the DNC. No, if, if I had to choose one thing, it's the lack of courage, Mike. 